Hi there, Jay Tedeschi here, Senior Technical Marketing Specialist at Autodesk. Today we're going to take a look at dynamic simulation in Inventor Pro 2016. I'm going to start by activating a level of detail rep which eliminates or suppresses components that will not play an active role in the simulation. Once the simulation environment is entered, the simulation player dialog box appears and I'll start by setting the duration of the simulation to half a second and we'll leave the default intervals at 50. That's the level of detail of each time step interval in the simulation environment itself. Next up we're going to edit uh, this joint here, the prismatic joint. Now the reason we're doing this is to set the reference frame for both the the assembly itself and the components that are going to be in motion, those should have a common origin uh, for the reference frame, which they now do. So once that's done, we can now go in and uh, begin to uh, basically take the steps required to build up this dynamic simulation. Now, as this part right here is going to be sent, you know, this, the forces that we're about to determine through the dynamic simulation are going to be used for a stress analysis run to ensure that this part can handle those loads. So what we're doing right now is prepping this part using the export to FEA functionality, and we are mapping the joints to each of the faces on the model where those joints will, where the forces from the motion or the forces from the simulation on those joints will be enacted. So essentially dynamic simulation is a giant free body diagram tool. Think of it like that. So we generate stresses and forces at joints. Those joints then have to be mapped to the faces on a model so that the those can then be imported into the stress analysis environment. Next up we're going to specify a 3D contact joint. The purpose of this is that uh, during the simulation itself uh, I kind of want to see what happens with that retaining pin uh, as it's in motion. It's free to rotate up and down so we kind of want to see what, what's going to occur. The next step is to use the input grapher to uh, set the imposed motion for these joints, for, for this joint in particular. So over the course of half a second, we are going to see 24 millimeters of travel from 0 to 24. We'll specify the nature of that travel. It's not going to be an abrupt uh, switch from 0. It's going to be, you know, it's going to start to slow down a little bit as it reaches its peak, and it'll slow down a little bit as it re returns. The next step is to define what happens on either side of this. This is not a single motion, this is a cyclical motion, and we'll define that by specifying that the range out of bounds of that half second time interval that we're looking at is a cyclical environment. Once that's done, we essentially just hit play, and the simulation player will now move all of the components based on the assembly constraints and joints from the assembly environment which have been converted into motion joints here in dynamic simulation and in a moment we will be able to see the results of that simulation with the output grapher so let's go ahead and open that up all right let's take a look first at the uh, contact that we added now, I, I basically, you know, there was no, this isn't going to have any effect one way or another on the results of the simulation, but for the purpose of just showing the capability of, you know, how, how much information I'm able to extract from the model, I wanted to show you that, you know, we are able to look at things like vibration uh, based on, on motion. Now, at this point, let's take a look at the position, so uh, we'll evaluate the several positions of the assembly. You'll note that as I select a time step in the grapher, the model updates to show that uh, that same exact time step. Now if we search for the maximum stresses, the maximum force, obviously it's right here at that peak moment, and we can look at the curve properties for that. We can look at the, uh, the median, the average, the maximum. Uh, these are all in Newtons, the forces on that joint. And I'm going to select that. That is part of the export to FEA. So we now have a single time step. We can, we can select multiple time steps, but for, for this example, we're just going to select that one uh, 
quarter second where we see our peak stresses and we're going to export that to the part so that we can then use stress analysis to evaluate um, essentially what's going to happen to that part when it is in motion or you know you in use when this product is uh, is actually being used so let's go ahead and activate a level of detail rep I created called isolate that brings me to this sub assembly with that defined we'll go in and create our stress analysis simulation run we will utilize the motion loads from the dynamic simulation environment there's only one time step that's a quarter at, at 0.25 seconds uh, so they're really at this point there's not much left for us to do in the stress analysis environment because we've already brought in all of the loads essentially uh, all we have to do is uh, take a look at the material, make sure that it's the material we want. Uh, there are some things we could do, like we, could, we have the option of doing some what-if scenarios by uh, specifying multiple runs with multiple materials. In this case, uh, just going to specify the constraint environment. We'll start by selecting this lower face and specifying that that's a frictionless. We'll also specify that we have pin constraints on both of the locations where the bolt is that hold these down uh, to that lower part of the assembly. So there's our constraint environment. Now let's go ahead and set up our mesh. We'll start with a sixteenth of an inch average or yeah, sixteenth of a millimeter average size, a minimum element size. We specified we wanted to use curved mesh elements and with that we'll go ahead and mesh our model. Only thing left to do now is run the simulation and very quickly obviously because it's not that big a model uh, we can see that uh, we have uh, acceptable stresses more than acceptable factor of safety um, the displacement is next to nothing uh, we can go ahead and animate those results if we want to see how the stresses are distributed throughout the part while it is being stressed we also have the ability to validate the accuracy of the simulation through using the convergence tools. Now what the convergence tools allow us to do is to iteratively look for convergence on an answer. So essentially what this tool is going to do is run iteratively and refine the mesh in the areas with the highest stress until it either does or does not achieve convergence. And it, it basically is looking to see if it's arriving at an answer and as you can see that curve is leveling out so after three iterations it stops and, and determines yes uh, the solver is converging on an answer so these are valid results. Uh, probe tools allow us to investigate uh, pinpoint stresses within the model itself and um, that's pretty much it. I, I want to thank you for your time uh, this has been a look at dynamic simulation and the stress and stress analysis environment in Inventor Pro 2016. I hope this was useful, and uh, I look forward to working with you again very soon. Bye bye.